Today I want to talk to you about having one style. When you learn an illustration at college or at home, you try a lot of things out. Universities encourage that. I was a nightmare for my lecturers at university because I started my first year thinking I knew exactly what sort of illustrator I wanted to be. I was unwilling to experiment too much because I thought it was wasted time, time that I could be spending working on my narrow focus. Speaking of focus, why don't you focus your attention on this subscribe button for a moment? I didn't see the value in life drawing or experimental drawing exercises or trying out printing techniques or painting. I just wanted to do my own thing on Photoshop. I was arrogant. I thought I knew better than my teachers. I was a fucking idiot. I think that attitude is quite common among students too. No offence. It took me probably 30 years to develop a student mindset where I can go out into the world and know that I don't know everything and that I need to value the experience of other people. I look back now and I can see that what I wanted to do was very misguided in terms of commercial viability. If I had continued down that path, I would have done one thing that ultimately wouldn't have made me any money. Partly because it would only appeal to a very niche set of clients, but also because in the years after I left university, technology in Adobe software primarily and drawing tablets advanced so much that what I was doing became incredibly easy to do automatically in the software. So anyone could do it. Whatever skills I'd learned just became irrelevant. I didn't get all I could out of university because my mind was closed. I could have studied on the best illustration course in the country and still had that same experience. That's my fault. So in a roundabout way, I'm getting to my point about working in one style. You've probably heard it's better to have one style in your portfolio. In my arrogant youth, I had one style in mind and wanted to work solely on that. If I had done that, I would have been able to do it, but I wouldn't have been able to do anything else. When technology made my style obsolete, I would have had to start from scratch instead of having the skills I needed to evolve my style into something else naturally. It's a very important part of your creative education to try out different things. It's essential, I would say. What I also didn't realize at the time was that those things I didn't think were useful to me would have improved the work I was making as my main focus anyway. At a very basic level, if I'd have practiced drawing for three years uh, while I did my degree, a fundamental skill for an illustrator, I would have had far more style and career opportunities open up in front of me. In order to develop the unique style that will hopefully make your career as an illustrator, you need to try all different kinds of things out. Learn everything you can, find out what you're good at, find out what you enjoy, find out what potential clients will pay you for, and then narrow it back down to a clear, well-researched and intentional focus. That's a well-reasoned, mature development of a style, not just picking something you like when you're a teenager or in your early 20s and having blinkers on to everything else. Often when I see new graduates' websites or portfolios, they have a lot of different kinds of work in there, which makes sense because their universities encourage them to try lots of different things out. That's a dead giveaway between a student portfolio and a professional portfolio. There's nothing wrong with it at all, but it's a different thing, right? A student portfolio shows all the different things a person has experimented with, and a professional portfolio shows what that artist has learned from those experiments. A three-year course in illustration will start out with lots of experimenting and end with one final major project, which is supposed to show what you've learned. Really, you need another year on that course to fill up your portfolio with 20 more illustrations in that well-developed style. The most famous illustrators, I won't say the best because that's not the case, but the most famous illustrators have one recognizable style. I'm sure you can think of many examples. Those illustrators weren't always working on that one style from day one. It's more likely to have been a natural evolution into a style that they have become popular for. If you look back 10 years at their work, it would be quite different, if not completely different. There are many other illustrators that are no less skilled, that aren't famous at all, because they never developed that one style that's really popular. They've chosen a different path, which has been able to work in lots of different styles. And they might do really well financially, but they won't be famous, because nobody remembers their style. It's always different. 
You can have a good career doing both, but a lot of us would like to have a bit of fame and recognition to go along with the paycheck. I used to play a lot of fantasy role-playing computer games. In most of the different games I've played, inevitably there would be a character that used a bow and arrow, my favourite. Now this might be a completely unrelatable and alienating metaphor, but stay with me for a minute. When you're a student, you're just starting out. You're shooting regular arrows at enemies and doing minimal damage. You get a job here or there, but you're at a low level. You need to level up, learn new skills, maybe some magic spells, ideally. As this fictional character levels up, they will probably learn a technique where they can shoot multiple arrows from one shot in a big fan. It's great for hitting multiple enemies at once, but it does less damage than a regular shot. That's like working in multiple styles as an illustrator. You can shoot those arrows all over town and make a medium impression on many different clients. Some of them will probably hire you or die, if I can return to my metaphor, but a lot will be unaffected. What you're really looking for in this game is a magic bow. You can't hit everybody at once with the bow, but the ones it does make contact with are destroyed or to back out of the metaphor, will love your work. That's what these famous illustrators have. They have a style that won't work for everybody, but the ones that it resonates with will love it and love the artist. That's how you get famous. You don't need to hit everybody. 100,000 people on Instagram is a very small niche of people in the grand scheme of things, but for an illustrator, that's massive. If I look at one of these famous illustrators now uh, that has a definite signature style, I don't really know if they could work in a different style now because they've spent so long specialising in one thing. But in order to get to the point where they start specialising, I can almost guarantee they had to try out a lot of different things. It's a long quest to find your magic bow. It takes time. While you're working on that, maybe you could try out a crossbow or a throwing knife, maybe some fire arrows or a two-handed sword if you need the money. I've lost myself in this fantasy now. Let's leave it there. Farewell, traveller.